Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to Sunday evening. We are here and we are here to entertain you. Everyone, let's entertain the masses. Can we have a round of applause? <laughs> Ryan, Dylan, Fats, welcome. Hey. How have we been? Doing well. Had a nice chill Sunday. Like a Sunday afternoon lunch. Mm -hmm. Nice and cold outside. It's been good. Um, hands up, who's played golf this weekend? <laughs> Oh, come on, Fats. Fats as a family. Ryan's had two <laughs> rounds already. I've had one today. And Dylan, you had one today? Or are you going to say you played yeah. yesterday as well? Yeah. I played twice. Yeah, well, we, we, well, we expected everything. Okay, everybody. What is happening today? Well, today we're choosing 17 and 18. And then our Daco golf course is completed. Yay. And then there's only one thing left to do, and that's to stroke the golf course. But there's so much more happening today. Um, we had a, we'll discuss some of the golf that's happened uh, over the weekend. There's a group of us that went out to Huddle Park and had a round. So we'll catch up with what happened over there. Then we, our Thursday league is back. And this happens this coming Thursday at Houghton. So that's quite exciting. We've had... 54 players sign up already, but let me just tell everybody watching that Thursday is the only confirmed one because Sundays are still a bit of the mm, mm, mm and golf clubs, they only open Friday, so they need to find out what's happening still. And then finally, then we'll choose our course and then we'll talk about PGA stuff. But we are missing someone because there's only four of us here and we need to have five to have the discussion. So who is on the discussion today? Can I please have a nice drum roll? Here it comes. And... Welcome back to our guest, Donny Geldenhuis. Hello, Donny. Welcome. Mr. Hey. Hey. Thanks for having me again. I thought Donny needed to come because he played it today, and um, he needs to he needs to represent of the guys who played at Huddle today. Everybody is commenting already. That's nice to see everybody there. We have Martinez Becker. You're first in the line. Hello, lads. And then Paul Ricketts as normal. Paul Ricketts, thanks for joining us. And then we have Quibus. Um, I don't know who the girl is. Um, Hanu, welcome, Hanu, hello chaps, and then Basil, you're there, uh, what does this say? Is that spell check or is that French? I don't know, okay. My French is awesome. Peter Prince, hello guys, uh, and the rest, Carl from Linda, good evening, uh, Dorian, good evening, I don't have time to put everybody in, but yes, let's get started. Right, what are we starting with? Well, I like this little news thing, and this is what we're starting with. Well, we're starting that we have... Golf is back. News. Yes. That's all that is important. Yeah. We don't care anything about ours. But at least we can get onto the courses. They chose the coldest weekend in the, the year to play, but the guys marched through. Where do we play today? Okay, let's start. You played Jackal Creek today. Dylan, how did it go? What you shoot? Uh, yeah, pretty good. Uh, I've been obviously working quite hard in lockdown on uh, trying to change a few things in the swing, trying to mm -hmm. neaten up the game a little bit. So it was a little... Tough at times to uh, commit to. Um, I've been trying to line up a lot straighter as well, and that was awkward sometimes because I tend to miss left, and so now I'm aiming further left, so sometimes a little awkward. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, mostly, mostly it was good. Yeah, I enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. So good to be out. Um, obviously, I mean, a bit cold now, but actually out on the course, the weather was quite nice. It was mm. uh, nice temperature, nice and fresh. Uh, yeah, just a great day, really. So, Les, did he say what he shot? I, 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 don't, I don't know if he said what he shot. I shot 70. Yay! Well done, coach. 70 is a good effort first time well, out. Can we have a round of applause for that, everybody? It was, an, it was a neat one as well. Only, only one bogey, which was quite nice. Very that's nice. kind of what I've been trying to do. Yeah. Boys on the chat. Next time we back from the ladies' tee. <laughs> Boys on the chat line, if you played golf at the last today, just drop in your scores there. Let's see what the guys scored. I know there's been some big ones. Mr. Lyle Langley for five shot something like a, at 91. So, hmm. Ryan, you had two rounds. You shot 74 round one? 
Yeah, 74 Driver Club uh, and 76 today on Royal East. Very nice. So the indoor practice has gone well. And then, Donnie, you played for the yeah. first time today in your shots. 74. 74. So the guys can play. I won't go Jeez. too far of how much I shot because we'll see later where I came in the leaderboard. Anyway, everybody, <laughs> Fats, I would ask you the question if you didn't play. So we'll have to wait till Thursday. Okay. Yes. Boys, this is what happened this morning. Very exciting. Good morning, everybody. Well, it's Sunday and we just had to make a plan and come out and get a round of golf. How many do we get? We got 12 ducks to come out and play Huddle Park. We're all gathering. We're all around. I'm sure we're going to have a lot of fun. Now we're back. This is your second round already. Oh, How was your first? And are you looking forward to your second? No, it was shocking. My first round, I shot a 93, 24 points. So it can only go better today. Excitement is an understatement, to be honest. It's, mm -hmm. it's, I think it's going to be epic. I'm not sure how the golf's going to be, but very excited today. Three months, you know, since we last hit a, a hit a ball on the golf course. So yeah, I'm I'm Good. looking forward. He doesn't know yet. He is the guest on the show tonight. And I just haven't asked him yet, so uh, we oh. can look back and see how we played. There we go. It's <laughs> like go go and give a good good representation of what happened. <laughs> no, well, I mean, uh, listen, you're just uh, glad to be um, on the course again. I think uh, everybody's just eating eating to play. No matter what scores you're going to hit, um, it's just have fun and uh, yeah, I mean. It's good to be back. You know what? After three months to get on the golf course again, it's no other way. Even if it would have been snowing, I would have still played golf today. <laughs> oh, yeah. Somebody said Pete uh, I enjoy it from your, from your show. It's, it's basically everybody's points of views in terms of, of, the, of the courses. Um, and I actually um, told my wife on the first occasion when you spoke about, I think it was Jekyll Creek, I would never even be on a show because I never played this. So good luck to those guys. I think a lot of guys Google their courses before they gave comments. But yeah, I <laughs> love the show. Baz, we're at you after three months. Are you looking forward to continuing in the quest of golf? Oh, Maz, it's really good to be back, eh? And uh, it's nice to be back with the boys as well. And yeah, weather's good and uh, looking forward to just getting out there. No matter what we shoot today, I think we're all going to enjoy it. Oh, nice one. How was that? That wasn't me. That was good, straight. <laughs> Just off the fairway. It's on the fairway. 150 to go. Happy use. <laughs> Good. Positive. 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 Oh. It's in the tree, Enjoy, jump. Enjoy, guys. My first hole back after three months. Bogey to start. What did you get? Uh, I hit the tree off the driver and then a four. Nice, okay. Very 12 man field. We've come out here after three months. You've taken the victory on even par. Are you, how would that go for you? I don't know. Some of the guys said uh, no golf three months. I don't know what they're talking about. I played right through you. That's why I played well today. <laughs> Had a new drive in my bag, but otherwise uh, went quite, quite well. Bunkers were a bit off par, but anyway, you can't expect the best after three months layoff. Good but it was good. Good to be back. Yeah, it's very good. After three months, your bride, bridesmaid again. Yes, yeah, but it's but nice to get out there after three months of swing. Uh, a couple of bits of putty practice in the garage and a little bit of chipping. They had to help me today because that was the game because the driver was useless. Mm. But very nice to get back out on the course and with all the Duck Hook boys again. Yes. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Nothing wrong with plus two. Nah, I'll take plus two. I'll take plus two on Thursday. Yes. That would be the one to do. Yes, plus two could win Thursday, sure. Hopefully. The driver was working, but yeah, the irons were still a bit shaky. Mm -hmm. I'll have to work on it for Thursday, so putting was horrendous. <laughs> Big day Thursday, looking forward to Thursday? Yeah, definitely. Yes, great day out, and many oaks looking forward to Thursday. And like you said, plus two, you never know on Thursday. So that was the boys, it was good fun. Um, here is some um, scores. Dorian played Jekyll Creek, shot 93, even part on my handicap, well done Dorian. Peter today, 86, he started well, and faded towards the end. Hanu, 75, PPC, ringer, well done Hanu. Hmm. Uh, 7, handicap, whatever. <laughs> and then Ruben Swat, 81, partner, it's not bad, it's not bad. Okay, but anyone else? But he's at a golf course. Anyone else? Uh, Fricky says, uh, PS high boys, that tells me nothing, well done. Okay, okay, okay. So, let's have a look at what the, 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 the end tally of... Um, Huddle Park was. Barry Fenter winning on even in this little warm-up. Well done, Barry. That's a very good round. Um, Paul Ricketts, as you said, plus two. Bryce Man years again. Donnie, you there. Right there. Playing for plus one. Plus three. That's very good golf. Kevin Ho, tied third with you. Tied fifth. Three guys. Peter, uh, Simon, Jeff. Alan Lowe, he was up there for a long time and then he 
he had a bad stretch of three holes, I think. Uh, plus six, and Joey plus six. The coach, uh, not the coach, Basil, uh, pro playing for plus five, shot plus seven, which is not bad if you're playing for plus five. Uh, Lyle and myself got the back of the field. That's not good, is it? Um, so that was that. Donnie, you were there. Did you have a good day? Yeah, no, it was luck. Um, you know, being out, um, you know, on the course, you know, it's, it was, you're not confined to the house. It was really awesome. You know, also with like all the guys, it was really an awesome day. Take us through your scorecard. Yeah, obviously, it's like, um, you know, having two practice sessions at home with my net, you know, it's like started off with six um, solid pars, you know, a couple of lucky bounces off trees. And then just had a bit of a bad stretch with uh, seven, eight, and nine, where the short game sort of let me down. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, as we can see, I had a, a couple of good pars from 10 to 13 and uh, a couple of nice uh, up and down birdies on 14 and uh, 16. Mm. And then finishing off with good pars. Those par fives are definitely not long enough for you, Donnie. I can tell you that much. Um, the, what was it? The 16th? You had an eight iron left. Well done. Your. Yeah. So, a bit well played, well played. A lot of rustiness, but for plus eight to be the worst of three months, uh, golfer, that's not bad. So, well done. Lots more to come. What's more to come is the Thursday League. Fats, we're back with the Thursday League soon. And this is this Thursday. Oh, yeah. Houghton has accommodated us, which is fantastic. That means the field's open. I remind you that Sunday Leagues is still to be confirmed. How many, how many Houghton winners do we have here? We've got one. Fats is a Houghton winner. Almost all of us. Wait a minute. Coach. Ryan's a, a Houghton winner, and Donnie's a Houghton winner. That's unbelievable. Um, where's yours, Dylan? <laughs> it's Nothing? coming. Sorry, boys. Those, those trophies are small. Those, what are those little <laughs> things? What are those little what? things? <laughs> Maz, 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 come yes. now. Come now. Two players of the season here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's get a full show. Yeah, show us, show us, show us. Now you're just showing off. Well done. Two in a row. <laughs> so for those who didn't know, yes, hogging all the trophies. Okay. Fats, this is the story with Houghton. Yes, uh, so yeah, thank you for Houghton, first of all, um, for confirming our booking and slotting us in um, in the first week of golf being opening. And I think it's really super from them. Um, yeah, and obviously good rates. Um, so loyalty members will be 360, non loyalty 420. And we just urge the guys, obviously, due to the COVID regulations, there will be no registration, so no payment on the day. Um, so the guys just need to EFT before. And we're obviously not using Golfscape anymore. Um, it, it is a lot of money to, to keep Golfscape going per month. And with no events being played, uh, we just had to, had to scrap that. So we'll mm -hmm. go manual up until the, the Duckhook app is up and running, hopefully in the next month. Um, we've been in contact with the guys. They've had a bit of struggle um, financially throughout the, the lockdown. Um, but yeah, they, they're back on track. So hoping to get that up and running very soon. Yes, exciting. And just to remind you, if you're booking cards, you're booking it through us because you've got to pay us because we've got to pay everybody one lump sum. The, club, uh, the, the pro shop's kind of closed. So please uh, remind everybody, please pay us up front. That really, really helps. Let's have a look at the field so long before we move on to... 17 and 18th hole you have the field of first we're all off the first so this is it's quite a spread out field starting at 7 30 the more we get then we might move a bit earlier but it is cold so i'm trying to keep those three uh not active everybody if your name is not here but it's nice to see some of the faces from terence to his with his foreign leon uh leon Oestes and naruda's back uh lyle's playing mark's playing uh dim stafford's playing the the Hall brothers are playing. Oh, did did I see somewhere that the other Hall brothers playing? I did. Yes, I think he's on the yes. on the other. So I need to add him to that four ball, and then uh, so Gideon, if you're watching, you're going to be hoofed from this four ball. And then uh, let's uh, let's anybody else on our group here? No, let's move to page two. A bit later, myself, Ruby, um, Coach, me and you are playing together. I don't care what happens, we are playing. I hope you look <laughs> Dorian, uh, uh, Donnie, Fricky, Brene, you're all there. And then Fats, you 920. Anyone else of interest? Uh, where are you, Ryan? You are somewhere. There you are. Just Ryan and JP, Fricky. 850. So, lots to look forward to. And let's I just... don't recognize my, my singles knockout against Fricky, man. <laughs> mm, there's news about that. Should we tell them now, yes. Fats? I think so. Um, so, the team knockout is going to continue as is. Due to obviously losing three months of golf, we won't have time to fit in the singles knockout this year. So, that has unfortunately been scrapped. 
Um, the teams, the only thing that's going to change is you're still going to play all your group games, um, but only the group winners will progress to the quarterfinals. Um, so that gives us just one round less to try and finish it within the season still. So yeah, there will be no singles, unfortunately. Three months of golf, is, it's, difficult. it's going to be impossible to fit everything in. And there's so many more players in the team, so let's focus on the teams. Before we move on, I just want to remind everybody, if, you, if you're not aware, this is what the standings actually look like. 109 points, uh, eyes points, Lyle and Mark is tied. And then we've got Ewald, one point back. Uh, Etienne Pinot already a winner of the season, one point back. Carl van der Mullen is the, in top five. Donnie, there you are, 102, some work to do. Uh, Dorian, Ryan yep. Jensen, Peter Prinsler, and Billy Hall um, run up the top 10. So that's going to be exciting to see what's going to happen and get back into it. I what think you made a mistake there. You spelled Ryan with an with a H. Yeah, but that is the right Ryan, I'm sure. I'm no, sure. that's supposed to be me, man. No, no, no. no, 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 no. You can't be that guy. Donnie, did, uh, sorry, Donnie, did you just have a little buffalo there with a coffee on live oh. TV? Sorry. Left, left there. Uh, here's a good question. Before we move on, this is a very good question. And the Masters, yes. So what the plan is, but this is, you know, things need to be confirmed is, Hanu, what's happening with the Masters is the Open is going to have to move, right? So the Open date, which was the 3rd of July? 7th. 3rd of July, yes. 3rd of July. We're going to try and move the Masters to the 3rd of July. So at least we get that played. It will be the same people who qualified and we'll try to play that. I think that's the best way because we really want to play the Masters. And then the Open moves later. So the qualifying starts later and the Players' Championship will fall away. Yes. There we go. So I get the yeah, so for another year. The best way to go about it, Maz. We need to drop one major due to obviously losing three months of golf. And I think the Players is the one that, we, that we're going to drop because of the, the Masters and the Open having so much history at the same courses. And then, of course, we've got to keep the Summer Cup, which is the big last event of, of the, the season. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, the Open qualifying will start as of Thursday um, up till the end of August. And then September, October, November will be the qualifying for the Summer Cup, along with the rest of the qualifying criteria as we had it before. Okay, great. So now we know. We've, we're juggling as we go. So the moment we have confirmation that the Masters will take place, you'll know first. It is time to do some recaps. Let's choose 17 and 18. Why, shall, shall we? Recap page one. Reading, par four. Glendower, par five. Kyle Army, par three. Woodhill is the par four. Who's up for the next page? Action. Dane Fern. Well, that's not the, the right one. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> then we had Toffoli, <laughs> the six. <laughs> And then Irene, the short little downhill par three on the seventh. Um, we got the eighth at Serengeti with the Island Green par five. Next. The ninth we had at Blue Valley. Blue Valley. Blue Valley. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that is. Glen Vista is the tenth. Vista, and we got yeah. the one at Royal at 11. Uh, Houghton, 12. Basil. Dylan. Uh, no then we have. <laughs> I was just then letting you know. Houghton. The one I lobbied for from episode two, a uh, little beautiful par three thirteenth, and then we've got uh, the par five fourteenth. Highland Gates. Uh, Highland Gates, straight mm -hmm. one, the double dog leg anaconda, and then we've got the fifteenth at Rand Park, the little par three with the angled green and the fall away on the right hand side, and then we've got Eel Canyon's drivable sixteenth with some water and drama in play. Well done, team. Well done. Okay. These are the selections. Let's, um, it's not overly complicated. We've got Ibotzi, par 5, and Jackal Creek, par 5. Um, that is for the 18th. The uh, 17th. No, wait. I'm lost. That's 18th. for the 18th. That's for yeah, the 18th. Yeah. So for the 17th, Ibotzi's got a par 4, a little short par 4, and Jackal... Uh, sorry, Jackal Creek's got the little short par 4, and Ibotzi's got the... Um, still under construction. I think it was a stroke 2 once upon a time. Shall we look at the polls first? Let's have a look at polls so we know kind of where everybody's headed towards. They're headed towards having the 18th at Ibotzi. So, Dorian, it looks like it's all going to come full circle for you. So, looking at this, <laughs> that's why I said it's pretty much easy to figure out what's going to happen if most of the people have gone for Ibotzi's 18th. But we like to look back and tell you and show you what it all is, what it all entails. So, the 17th at Ibotzi, hey, who's up? There it is. I'll Fats. go for it. 
Um, yeah, obviously before the construction started was uh, the stroke two. I think they're going to keep it the stroke two. I don't, I'm not sure about all the changes they've made. I know they, they put in a pipe there. That's the main reason. But yeah, it's a tough, quite a tough long par four. Um, that bunker on the right that you see now comes into play with, with the driver um, for, the, for the longer hitter. So it's a really narrow fairway there. So it's uh, quite risky to, to use the driver. And then going three wood, you've got quite a long shot, uh, second shot into the green. Um, obviously protected with bunkers on the right, and then that no-go hazard on the left is really difficult. So it's got to be a, quite an accurate second shot to have any sort of chance for, for a birdie. Um, but I think most guys will be more than happy walking over there with a par. Any, anyone want to add to uh, Fats' comments? I just no, think I can... it. I've never played it. <laughs> <laughs> So Strian. Strian <laughs> Dylan wants Ryan. to speak. <laughs> yeah, I think um, also what you don't quite see on that um, on that flyer there is when you even if you do it the fairway there on your second shot, that green's just kind of tucked a little bit, so it doesn't run with the shape of the hole. It's just kind of offset to the left just a little bit, so it forces you to try and aim left, and then you don't want to aim left because you feel like you're aiming in the marsh. Mm. So. Uh, yeah, it's a really, it's a really, really tricky um, and tough second shot. Uh, even if you do happen to, to find that very narrow fairway. So yeah, a lot of trouble around there. Very strong, very strong par four. Donny, it's like I'll, I'll agree with Coach there. That that green as well. If you think about it, tapers a little bit in as well. You know, with those bunkers at the back right corner. So you know, it makes that that approach shot so difficult because. You know, it's like if you're having a bad day in the bunkers, it's like you're risking hitting it into that uh, nature, you know, preservative zone there. So it's, it's a really tough second shot. And that can, I think, also make a break, um, you know, around that, that you've got going. Ryan, I'm not going to ask you about it because you haven't played there. So I'm going to let you start with Jackal Creek's 17th. That's that little one. Can you remember that one? Here it is. I'm not Next really. I'm not, I'm not too familiar with Jackal Creek. Uh like I've played a couple times, but I think I think we should let Coach take uh, the hole because he knows this uh, very well. <laughs> no problem, Coach. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, that that graphic there is perfect. Um, you can't you can't tell when you're standing on that tee box how how much that fairway curves like that. Um, and that curve there is at about 180 meters, so it's a really weird distance. So you know it takes a lot of discipline to stand up there and hit like a a six iron or a five iron to that little corner there. So generally, if you take the longer clump, you've actually got to hit it over that uh, bush and piece of water that you can see. So that, again, makes quite an uncomfortable shot. Once you've got the tee shot away, it's a very simple green. There's no bunkers. The water there is not really in play. So it's all about the tee shot. Uh, but late in the round, if, you, you know, if you've got a good round going or you, you, you're up there in a competition or whatever, it's a, so you stand on that tee and it's just a make or break shot. You either hit that fairway and it's an easy shot, or if you miss it left or right, it's literally either lost ball or chip out sideways or drop out of a hazard. There's no luck recovering. There's no recovering from missing that fairway at all. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a it's a good nice good um, nice good uh, hole to test the nerves out and and to apply a bit of polish to your round. Yeah, short hole. And I think what hole. makes that hole really good as well, um, like Dylan said there, with that um, curve on the fairway at 180. If you don't really know the golf course, you don't know, you can go over that, that little bush and you've still got quite a wide fairway um, stuck behind there. Um, so a lot of guys tend to either try and just go middle fairway, they push a little right, and you've got zero chance of going for the green on your second if you miss the fairway right. It's a straight punch out left, and then you've got your third going. Okay. Yeah. So I, will, I will actually say as well, Matt, sorry, I will mm -hmm. actually say as well that um, Jackal is uh, quite often not the prettiest golf course, but that is probably the prettiest hole on the course. It really is. Mm. It's, for some reason, it's always much greener the fairway than anywhere else. Um, it's very secluded. You can't see much, you know, of the other stuff that's around there. And it's got uh, it's got quite a lot of trees um, that that the rest of the course doesn't have. So it's definitely, I would say, the prettiest hole on that course. The yeah, it's got those rocks as well, which yeah. makes, makes mm. it nice. The question yeah, is, yeah, yeah. which is better, the Jackal Creek 18 or the Botsy 18th? Well, this is a Botsy's 18th. A big drive needed to clear the marshland. First of all, probably at least 180, 200, and that is without a fade. Good hole. Absolute cracker of all. I think this is probably one of the better closing par fives I can think of. Um, not that I've played a hell of a lot of closing par fives. I mean, some of the, some of the courses in Joburg have. But this is, uh, 
if, if you're even thinking about going for two, as Maz says, you've got to have a proper drive um, in probably the perfect spot so that you actually have a chance of getting anywhere near the green. Um, and, yeah, you can't really miss it. I mean, it's like fairway and then felt. So it is quite wide. But, uh, you know, if you do miss it, all those sort of no-go uh, hazard areas, no-go sort of uh, environmentally friendly areas. Um, but, yeah, it's a stunning, stunning three-shot par five. And if you get your drive away and get on that green for for two and have a, an eagle chance uh, and make it, you're definitely taking a couple of shots out the field. Definitely no reason to hit 12 shots. Definitely. No. No, 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 there's no reason. There's no reason. so wide. I don't know where 12 shots I don't know. even get and stored. <laughs> do, do you and I think what makes backwards? it interesting... Did he play? Did he play it three times? Or what? He, might have, <laughs> he might have birded it three times. What makes that hole really interesting as well is um, the way they've placed the bunkers. Um, wow. So there's almost a bunker for every distance tee shot you hit. Yeah. Um, so like 200, the further right you go, you've got a chance of going in a bunker. For a 280, 290 drive, you've got that bunker in the middle of the fairway almost. Um, so I think that was really clever as well, um, placing bunkers at different distances for your drive. And obviously the shorter hitters will try and go as far right as possible. They've got the bunkers there. So it's a really clever hole, and like um, Ryan said as well, it's not an easy second. Um, but I do feel between the two, it's a little bit easier um, than, than the one for Jackal. So it does give some guys a chance to, to make up a shot there if, if need be at the end of the, the, end of the round. Hmm. Yeah, definitely. Okay, well, let's yeah. have a look at Jackal's um, 18th. This is also very difficult. Also a three-shot uh, par five, I'm sure. Donnie, Jackal Creek, what do you think of this layout of the 18th? Yeah, um, so, sorry to coach you, but it's not my favorite par four in the world. I'm oh, sorry, par yeah. five. Um, you know, your, your tee shot of, you know, of the tee box is very daunting because the, the long hitters stand a chance to hit it in the bunker. You know, and for a long hitter, it's like that takes um, going for the green and two completely out. Um, but yet again, for your average guy, you know, you, they, they'll hit it short, but also you've got that water on the right, you know, which also is like a sort of water sloot there. So it brings it into into play for the average guys that actually hits, you know, sort of a fade. So um, it's definitely, a, for me, a daunting tee shot, you know, but it's an easy sort of, how can I say, it's like um, lay up, you know, three shotter, you know, because you can, you know, if you miss hit it, you can still have the chance of hitting it um, sort of like 100, 120 meters forward, you know, and then you've got like anything from a nine on pitching wedge, you know, to the green. Um, the only difficulty for me there, I think, is definitely that raised green that you can't see all the pins every time, you know, and, and the water in front of the green. It's a it's a tough third shot, you know, and if you can't if you don't hit it precisely, you know, you, you're in trouble. Hmm. Don't. Yeah, just to add a little bit to that, I mean, he's, he's pretty much spot on there. Um, Donnie, you're not alone. I think uh, our members at Jackal, I don't think anybody likes that hole. It's, it's, a, it's a horrible beast of a hole. Um, you know, it could at times it could quite come from me be a par six, to be honest with you. Um, the, guys, the guys that do fade it or maybe can't launch it quite as high um, as the better players, there's also trees on the left um, by the ladies' tee box that, that come into play off the tee shot. So if they're aiming left to get away from the hazard on the right, they can actually um, catch those trees on the left. And there's uh, there's um, flower beds and rockeries there, and there's, there's no relief from that. So you end up kind of reloading. Mm. Um, behind that, there's actually another lateral hazard on the left as well from the tee shot, which is left of the mm. cart path. And then there's a sleuth running all the way up the that extends out the side of the of the right hand hazard, and then right, the sleuth that bisects the fairway up at the green. So um, that, that becomes a bit tricky as well. Um, and then there's, they've now put out of bounds on the right-hand side of, uh, of the green and about 60 to 70 meters um, short right as well to discourage people from laying up to that strip of fairway on the right. Um, so there's out of bounds there as well. Uh, so it's just, I mean, Tough it's hole. just a horrible hole. It's, I mean, it's <laughs> just a horrible hole. You have to hit, you've got to hit a pier, you've got to hit your line. Even if you're laying up, you've got to go, okay, I'm going to hit this club on this line. Um, especially now in winter, if you if you get a bit sloppy with the layup, you can easily bounce into the sleuth because everything feeds to the right. So, um, you know, there's times when you kind of maybe have a sneaky go at it. But uh, most people, and certainly off the back tees, it's three shots. And if you hit those three shots on that green, that's you high-fiving yourself as you, as you get to that green. Okay, so looking at the comments that's been coming through and what everybody has said, I think we're leaning towards 
Ibotzi 7, uh, Jack Creek 17th, I can't get this right, and Ibotzi 18th. Am I right? Am I right? Oh, okay. I totally agree with that, Maz. So does that mean that we've actually completed our Duck Hook 18 after weeks of coming to you? Yeah. Even, even, even our pro agrees, 18th at Ibotzi, fantastic. So what does that all mean? That means that we have preempted this, and this is where we are. Is this right? There we go. That is our entire golf course, from hole 1 to 18. Well done, everybody. You might say it's not the perfect golf course, but it is our duck hook layout. So the white blocks on the top. <coughs> Excuse me. We need to stroke this bad guy. And what we're going to do is we're going to stroke it in the next episode, but we need your help. And to help you out, we've decided, we've decided, let me just come off to this, that we are going to choose a stroke one. So it makes it easier for everybody to understand, okay, we are starting <coughs> with the odds on the first or the back nine and work around it. It doesn't help just having no direction. So before we came on air, we, just, we thought, is Royal East 11th going to be the stroke one? Are we going to start there? Yeah, I think most of us yeah. did agree on that. It was either between that or, or the Highland Gate Hall for me, the 14th. Um, but like Ryan said, the, the Highland Gate Hall is a, not a, the most difficult three-shot par five, so it is a decent scoring hole as to where Royal is just a beast of a par four. Okay, so everybody, for the next show, this is your homework. The stroke one is Royal 11th, so the back nine is odds. The front line is evens. So do your thing, send it to us, and let's see how we can stroke this the DHG golf course. Okay, we, we talk so much, and it just flies by, yeah. and we still have to talk about the PGA Tour. This is crazy, it's crazy. Okay, so let's get Maz, to this. can we just also mention, I think um, after we've, we've done the strokes for the, for mm. the holes, mm. um, we'll be printing a scorecard. Yes. And then as soon as Imagine. that is ready, we'll hand out a scorecard to each and every Daku golfer, and then every time we play that course in an event, because in an official Duck Week event, it won't be a social social round. You add your score on that scorecard on that specific hole, and yes. then we'll see at the end of the day who's got the most stable fit points on the Duck Hook 18. Might get a nice prize in there as well. Okay, cool. and Dor Dorian asked the question, how many strokes won? Only one. So this is going to be Royal. Anyway, That'll be the Dorian. stroke one. And then we decide on the rest. So, um, well, so like, Highlands Gate's 14th is probably the stroke three. Am I right? Mm. Probably. Yes. So that's Stop kind stroking of it for them. Sorry, man. <laughs> Sorry, man. Okay, 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 okay. All right. PJ Tour time. Let's do this quickly. I want to show you the page one. Boom. Um, Zana Schaffler, look at that. He's gone 65, 66, 66. Remembering it's a par 70 course. So, um, so he's gone five under, four under, four under. That's great golf. Right at the end of uh, day three's play, did he take the lead? Gary Woodland from uh, Wilson um, is in, in a tie with five other players. Um, at minus 12. Also, great scoring. But look at uh, Justin Thomas. Some guys went for him. He's been playing well. Brandon Grace, top South African. Mr. Ryan Esmond, you went for Brandon Grace to finish or beat the rest of the South Africans. And I don't think that's going to change. Only Louis Oersteisen was the other South African who made the cut. The rest didn't make the cut. Jordan Spieth, nice to see him playing well. Also, three rounds under 70. Harold Varner, the third. He was leading after two rounds and then shot level par yesterday and kind of went backwards and let me show you one more and then i'll get your comments we can't go through them all uh justin rose um dill right up there um only two shots three shots back so anything's possible rory McIlroy, anything's possible if he just fires a little bit today bryson dushambeau has been interesting to watch is there anybody else and basil suji um, is there also not too far back needs probably a, a good round boys what do we think of this leaderboard let me go back to the first page and let me have your um thoughts I think it's phenomenal. For their first tournament back, the scoring's been really, really good. And I honestly believe we're in for one of the best finishes we could have asked for for 2020, never mind just the first tournament back. Um, you know, down there, tie ninth, you know, they, they're only three shots, four shots off the lead. It's, uh, yeah, it's quite phenomenal. I'm really excited to watch it just now. Yeah, I think also um, just uh, the big names that's up there on the leaderboard. Um, you, I mean, but McElroy speeds back in the mix. Coach will be really happy with that because um, he's been kind of nowhere in the last two years, but it seems like he's really playing well. Uh, Gary Woodland, I mean, um, yeah, Justin Thomas, the names on that leaderboard is just fantastic. Very good, very good. Yeah. So um, just to remind you of some of the notables that didn't make the cut. Kevin Nard didn't make the cut, defending champion. Boo. Um, Phil Mickelson didn't make the cut. Boo. 
Um, oh, Ricky Fowler didn't make the cut. Sorry, Fats. Um, yeah, Jason I'm blaming, I'm blaming on the did mic. Say so. I mean, he was so, so worried about saying the wrong things, being mic'd up. He couldn't concentrate on his golf. So that's my excuse. That, that's got to be the reason. It has to be. So, going forward to today, like you mentioned, it's going to be an all-out battle to see the end. I think, um, who do you think is in the best run of form to take this? Colin Morikawa. Do you think? Which, I, think I, Colin I, I can't put my finger on anybody because it, it, it could be anyone in the, in the, in the front page. I, I just think the way, the way Colin's hitting the ball, I mean, that oak just hits it. It's like he's got it on a string. Yeah. Pull out an eye and that thing just goes dead straight where he wants it. It's like it's quite phenomenal. So we must keep an eye Coach, on the A actor that hasn't missed a cut in his mm. uh, sort of professional career, uh, he's got nothing to lose going for it, I reckon. Coach, you and Donny, what do you guys choose as a winner? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick. I mean, I always, for years now, but I've always, always supported Speedy no matter what, even when he's missing cuts. So I'll be in his corner the whole way. And then my, uh, my, my pick from Thursday, Justin Rose. I honestly don't think so, so I wouldn't put um, money on him. But uh, you know, I've got to stick with him. And I just, I have a sneaky suspicion uh, if Rory catches fire, he might blow past a few people. Okay, yeah. Mr. D. Yeah, like from from my side, you know, I'm also a Jordan Spieth fan. You know, so for me, it's like I hope he actually pulls it through. He's due uh, a very good performance to win a tournament. Um, but you know, you have to say it's like Rory shot a 63 in the round two. You know, and he's capable of going low. So, you know, I think that's the danger, man, as well. He's minus nine, you know, and he can fire low, you know, and, and then everybody's chasing. Okay, great. We're almost done, boys. We're almost done. I want to, um, we have to look at our predictions and see how we're doing with our predictions we made on Thursday. So here we go. Who we got first? Fats, Ricky Fowler, out to win? Nothing. Top five to nothing. Group A, Justin Thomas. That might happen. So you might have your best finisher on that group. Uh, Ryan, Kevin R, out. To win, out. Grace, top South African. That might still happen. Group C, Ricky Fowler, gone. Justin Rose to win. That could happen. He's tied ninth. Well, uh, before going on, he was tied ninth. Um, at minus 10. My Tony Finau is tied 28th. I got him top five. I don't see that happening, unfortunately. And then Rose to beat our internal bet there, Dylan. Rose to beat Finau. Looks like that's <laughs> going to happen unless the uh, wheels totally come off Mr... Uh, Rose's golf. So that's interesting. The rest of you boys up to games. Okay. <laughs> I want to see this quickly. Brandon Grace, 66, 66, 66. This was yesterday's 66. Just nice to see this. Th that is absolutely firing. And let's hope he shoots. If he shoots 66 again today, I think he's in with a very good chance. Oh, yeah. And he's due, as I said, he's due a win. He's due a win. That's proper golf. He, um, and he revamped his putting stroke about two, almost two years ago now. And I think uh, we can all agree that's the one thing that kind of held him back a little bit. Um, and if he if he trusts that stroke and gets that toe releasing like he's been working on and starts rolling it, yo, he's going to be hard to beat because Alec hasn't you know hasn't changed his swing since he's been on tour. Same ball flight, same equipment, same swing. Mm. You know he knows his game inside and out. It's a game that can, that can win on any golf course, any conditions. So mm. yeah, if he um, if he gets that uh, that ball rolling, then the boys are going to struggle. Um, no, I was is... just watching the highlights of the, the SA Open earlier this year as well. Um, that final round of Grace um, just drained every single butt he could make. I mean, he was on fire. And the same mm. thing could happen tonight. Let's hope. Mr. Zach says, uh, the, some stats we don't know. Collins closing on Tiger's record of 25 cuts to start the PGA Tour. Well, good luck to you, Colin. Hopefully you can make it. And a few guys going for Rory. Peter's also going for Rory. Uh, Baz is going for, this is Rory's debut tournament, so it would be nice if he, he wins his debut. And then uh, Ruben, also Rory. So there's a lot of Rory fans going around. Okay, um, I did see a question that popped up on the, th on, on the chat. And this is, I just want to finish this uh, show with this. I'm just scrolling back down because it was a while ago. This was between Dorian and Quibbis because I misunderstood the question. He said, which is a stroke one? He was asking, how many stroke ones did we choose in the 18? This is very good. I'm going to put the list up now and then see if we can get it. Um, if we can figure this out quickly. Let me find that graphic. And this is it over here. Here, here. Off the here top of my head, I got three. Here we go. Reading, no. Glendower, no. Kalami, no. Whittle, yes. Kopolev, yes. Irini, no. Serengeti, is that the stroke one? No. No. Um, Royal, yes. Harton, yes. 
I'm on four. Highlands Gate, yes. Uh, and so it's five. No, I think it's five. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. See, we know we, we know what we're talking about. We know things. We've been staring at these things long enough <laughs> yeah, in the last three weeks to figure it out. Okay, well done. There's your answer, boys. Okay. What's, what's New Valley stroke one? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to have to think about this. I, I, I need to like work backwards. Anybody? Quickly, before we sign off, does anybody know who the what the stroke one of a Blue Valley is? Uh, no. Uh, Richard Stewart says number five. No, uh, that's just five, five stroke ones. Yeah. Uh, Don says thanks. That doesn't help. Anyway. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, we're going to have a course rating of like 160 on this thing. That would be interesting. Guys, that's it. We've already taken up 40 minutes of uh, valuable time on a Sunday. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for... Um, uh, Ruben says 11th. Is that right? Yes, he's right. Well done, Ruben. The 11th is yeah, a stroke one. Oh, Ruben. Well Dog done, Ruben. left, yeah. Okay. Um, thanks for the time. Um, we'll see you soon. We'll announce what's happening. Keep eye up for what's happening with Thursday League and the fields if you want to play. Otherwise, that's all we have the time for. Donny, thanks for joining Excellent. us. Everybody, thanks, thanks for joining us. Mad. Let's thanks give ourselves us. a round of Take applause. Money. And enjoy the golf if you're playing this week. Take pictures, post it on the Duck Facebook. Page. All right, everybody. Enjoy the PGA. Go, Brandon Grace. Well, salute. salute.